But what else did Jesus, through creation, what else did he do? Going back to Genesis chapter 1, and it says this. <clears throat> and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now, interestingly enough, once the Spirit of God began to move, then, the, then God spoke, or his word went forth, and light came. Well, he said, let there be light. When someone, again, when they speak, they're speaking their words out of their own very mouth. So when God is speaking, it was the word that went forth. Well, who is the word? What is the word that brings this light? Going back to John, but we're going to go to chapter 1. And we're going to read verses 1 through 3 and verse 14. And this is what the Bible here says about the word. And it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Now this points us right back to creation. And it's saying that the word here, that the word was with God, and the word was God, the same was in the beginning with God. Well, we know that God has no beginning because he comes from everlasting. So it's saying that the word comes from everlasting as well. And then it says, there was nothing made that was not made by this word. But who is the word? Verse 14 says this. And the word of God was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, who came down from heaven as the only begotten of the Father, to become the flesh for us. He is the word. Who is the one that did that? That's Jesus Christ. So the same very word that was spoken by back then, it was the creative works of Jesus Christ. So who is the author of creation? It is Jesus. So who is the author of our recreation? When the Spirit of God begins to move upon us and we begin to fill our void, we begin to feel our darkness that is upon us. We begin to sense and understand that darkness. Who is the one that is coming close unto us? It's Jesus. It's Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is Jesus that is moving upon us, that is trying to recreate in us that which we are not, that which we lost. He's trying to recreate that same very thing back in us, and we can get these principles all through creation. For nothing was made without him. That means even you. You were not made without Jesus Christ consenting to every specification that is in your life right now. If you were born with a malady, Jesus Christ said, it's okay, because I will be able to get them over that malady. If you were born with some kind of affliction, he said, it is okay, because my strength is sufficient for them. If you were born in some kind of situation that you think messed up your whole life, Christ consented to it because he said, Lord, Father, I am able to secure them that are tempted. It is Christ that creates us. It is him that makes us something that we're not. It is him that gives us what we don't have. It is him that creates us to be like him. So the word comes in and the word then brings light. But where does the light come from? Where does the light come from that shows us this revelation of the word? Well, we all know a very familiar scripture. And that familiar scripture is in the book of Psalm 119 and verse 105. And the Bible there says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my my path. So once God said, let there be light, light came into the world. And that light that came into the world, it, it separated the light from the darkness. But how does light come into our life? It comes from the word of God. That's where the light comes from. That's where the light of the revelation of Jesus comes from. It comes from the word. If we don't have the word, then we cannot have that revelation of light. Only until we get the word, which is the lamp and the light unto our feet, only until we get that into our life can we get a revelation of the word 
that is in this word. And that word is Jesus. Only until we get into this book that is the word of God, tangible, only until we get there can we understand who and what salvation is and who is the man of salvation. Only until we get into the word can we understand that. But what else does the Bible call light? What else does the Bible call light? Going to the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, and verse 23. And it says here, For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Oh, the way of life. Reproofs I and mean, instruction. The Bible says, For the commandment is a lamp, and it also says that the law is light. So what is God saying to us today? That as we go back and look at the steps of creation, and as you see that there was a earth that was without form and void, and darkness covered the whole thing, that when the Spirit of God began to move, the Word of God spoke, and light came into play. So the same very thing with us in this recreation of redemption, that as we are without form and void, as we are dwelling in darkness, without any kind of hope of that direction and any kind of sense of where we are to go in life, that the Spirit of God moves upon us and helps us to long for something that we do not have. And then as we begin to long for that, as we begin to seek after that, then Jesus shows up the true Word. But He shows up in His Word and He gives us light. And, the, and that light is commandments, yea, even the law of God. And as we begin to walk in the light, that as we walk in the light, then we receive even greater light. For the Bible says that the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. So as we step by step walk in the light, we walk in the commandments, we walk in the law of God, allowing ourselves to be controlled by another spirit outside of us. And as we do that, revelations of Jesus Christ will come abundantly from his word and we will understand who is the one of salvation. Going back to Genesis chapter 1. And as we look at creation once again, we're looking at it from the standpoint of our redemption. And it says here that after light was into the world, that it said that God saw that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Oh, that is very important, my friends, that we have to have light separate from darkness. The light and darkness cannot coexist. As a matter of fact, we can find this principle again in the word of God. Going to 2 Corinthians and chapter 6. 2 Corinthians and chapter 6. And we will read verse 14. And this is what the Bible here says. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? So when the Word of God finally begins to work in our life. And as that light begins to shine more and more as we're walking in the light, there's going to have to be a separation. And that separation is from all of our dark ways, all of that darkness, all of those things that, that allow our paths to be darkened. Well, what allows or makes our path darkened? It's none other than sin, folk. All of those, those sins that so easily beset us. All those things that come into our life and they draw and they suck from the spiritual life. All those works of darkness, all those things, that there has to be a separation from those things. And it comes when light comes into play. The light separates us from the darkness. So it is God's plan through, re through creation to redeem us through the same very way he created this world. And through that same very plan, when the Spirit of God begins to move upon us and we feel again our void and our emptiness, as we feel that and understand that, and as we seek after something higher and greater, then Jesus begins to manifest himself through his word. 
as we seek him in his word, as we go to him in his word, he manifests himself. And as that light comes from his word, we begin to walk and obey that light. We begin to keep that light. We begin to hold on to the light. And then as we hold on to the light, then what happens from there is that God begins to work in us. And he begins to separate us from all of our works of darkness. And we begin to enter into a deeper relationship than we ever had before with this unseen God of heaven. There is a work that is to be done through the redemptive power of the Holy Spirit. There is a redemptive work to be done through the ministry of Jesus Christ. And we have to thank the Father for his plan for our salvation. I just want us to be encouraged today and to understand that there is a God and that if we take time to get to know that same very God, that he will show us wonderful and bountiful things out of his word. How many of us have taken the time to consider the creation story? How many of us have taken the time to see our plan of redemption through the creation story? Most of the time, we don't because we just pass by things and we think that we know everything. But sometimes God wants us to sit down, take a moment, and actually let him teach us what he wants us to learn. So friends, I want to encourage you today that if you feel like you're a void, if you feel like you're empty, if you feel like you have a need of something, be encouraged because that is evidence that the Spirit of God is moving on your life. He's moving on your heart. He is with you to succor you and to help you. But we have to seek the Word. We have to seek the Word. And that Word is Jesus. We have to seek Jesus Christ through His Word, through His tangible Word, and see what He has to say in our lives. And as we seek the Word, I can guarantee bountiful and wonderful light will begin to shine from the Word. And as that light begins to shine, you will find there will be a separation from all those dark ways that you had in the past. And you will hold on and that you will run to and that you will grab a hold of all the works of light. This was just a message from the Holy Spirit to you today. And I pray by the grace of God that you have been blessed and that you have been encouraged through the word of God today. Until next time, friends, may the grace of God continue to be with you. God bless you. We love you. In Jesus' name.